Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial we'll be talking about something that is often neglected in DaVinci Resolve and that is signal flow. And this really helps you whenever you're doing more complex stuff and troubleshooting things and understanding this just really helps you get that next level of knowledge on DaVinci Resolve. So it's not the sexiest thing in the world, I'll admit it, but it sure is useful. Whenever you're the guy that knows exactly how the data flows through the software, that can come in really handy. So the first thing that DaVinci Resolve does with the image is get it off our hard drive. All right, good enough. And then the next thing is show it here, right? wrong. There's actually three things that happen before we get to this viewer here even. And that is our camera raw debayer if we're using camera raw media. That is our clip attributes and our optimized media. So the first thing we'll talk about is the debayer of the raw image. And that basically means that since raw is a fancy format that captures photosite data instead of actual, you know, readable video data, we need to convert that from photosite data, which is basically how the camera sensor works into these pixels that we can display on the screen. And we do that in the debayer. So in order to get to that, we can go to our project settings, which is either Shift-9 on your keyboard, or if you have Show Page Navigation enabled, it's this little button right down here. But that's no fun. So Shift-9. And now in this case, we have Cinema DNG Media. And we'll go more into this in a different tutorial. But here, we'll just show that this is happening beforehand. So we'll just make our white balance something crazy over here. Hit Save. Now you can see raw debayer settings have been happening before this. And then the other thing is our clip attributes. So if we go ahead and rotate this guy 90 degrees, because that looks great. That's happening before. And then the third thing is optimized media. And this will have its own video coming along the way that goes into the details of it. But basically what it does, let me hit generate optimized media first, is this pre-renders your footage into a nicer format that's easier for Venture Resolve to read. So like in this case, raw media, it takes extra processing power to do that debayering step. So this will convert it into a format that's much easier to read and even sometimes change the location of the hard drive to a cache drive or uh, a different folder, which can be useful. But we'll go into that in a different tutorial. Yeah, so we've generated optimized media. And if we go here, you can see we've got optimized media. If you don't have this little checkbox, just right click. And there we've got optimized media right there that you can check on. And you see it says something other than none, which means that we have optimized media generated. But if we do something like change our raw settings, go ahead and change this back to camera metadata, hit save. See, all of a sudden our optimized media goes away. You see, because we know that step happens before the optimized media, now we know why that happens when it goes away. So if you go through and you change a bunch of stuff like your raw settings or your clip attributes, and go ahead and show that here also. So we'll generate media again. And then you say, oh, maybe I don't want this rotated 90 degrees. Let's go ahead and do this as well. Clip attributes. You see in this case, actually our <laughs> optimized media didn't even update. And so even though since those changes are happening beforehand, we're not being able to see them because it's technically not even on our same media. So if we do something like force this media to update by going and changing like raw settings, we go shift nine, we'll change this back to something like project and hit save. You see now it updates our clip attributes. So this could be potentially something that's really frustrating for you if you're doing it. And the other way that this works is let me go ahead and change this back and I'll show you because this is something that really confused me for a while. So we'll go ahead and generate optimized media again. And now this is another interesting thing that happens. So you know how whenever we updated our raw settings and our project settings, that automatically updated our optimized media. Well here if we go to shift six to get to our color page and we change our camera raw settings here. So once again we'll do something crazy like this. And we go back to our media page. You see it hasn't updated here and it hasn't updated this, but even though in our media page it is showing optimized media and showing that we have it here in our color page, we're actually not using it anymore. So even though it hasn't updated there, this is actually not using the optimized media anymore because we changed the raw settings in the clip. And this is a very interesting and important thing because if you edit raw data a lot, this will totally screw up your optimized media workflow if you're using that because you'll be thinking that you're using the optimized media, but this is actually not the optimized media. So you might actually be having a really slow project that you don't realize why it's slow. So that's what's happening there. You've updated the clip camera raw media and that totally screws up your optimized media. So this is a very important thing for how SignalFlow works because otherwise you'd be thinking that you were changing raw settings on optimized media, which is just, that's not how that works because the optimized media formats that you're choosing from are not raw formats. And you can choose your optimized media formats in your project settings. If we go to our master settings, down here we've got optimized media format. Even though DNX HRHQX is very good, 
it is not raw. So there we go. Now that's sort of the most in the weeds part of this, but that's the most exciting to me because this is a very important thing to figure out how these changes don't update your optimized media. At least I think so. So it goes optimized media and then your media viewers. And then we'll go over and you see we've got it in our timeline here. And you see our timeline is actually showing something that is further down the line than our media viewer. Because once again, our media viewer is showing our optimized media. And since we changed some clip settings in our color panel, we know that this is not showing optimized media. So this is very interesting, right? So now that this is in our timeline, is there anything actually happening between this and this? And the answer is yes, there's a lot of things happening between this and this, because this is actually one of our final outputs. So the next step in our order of operations will be our edit sizing, like zoom and position and rotation. That happens next. And what happens after that is it goes into fusion. So if we go into shift five, you see fusion is happening before our color page still. So that's something simple like a, a directional blur. We turn this up. Make this blur angle zero. Now, if we go back to the edit page, you'll see that as we rotate the image, our blur stays the same direction. So if you look at the dark and light spots in the image, they're actually staying horizontal, even though we're rotating the image. So this really shows how our edit sizing happens before the fusion page. So the next thing that happens after the fusion effects are our edit effects. So go let's put like a zoom blur or something on this just for goofs. Let's see if we smooth strength. Nice. You see both our edges are coming in from the zoom blur, not from the directional blur. And we're just getting that zoom blur on top of the directional blur. And the thing that happens after this is actually our fusion cache. So once again, caching and optimized media, that's going to need its own separate video, how that works. But basically we can see if we go up to playback, fusion memory cache, this is on on. And then we go to fusion cache render output, we'll go to on. You see we get this little red bar, which means it's unrendered. And then if we go, yep, it's gonna automatically do this, and we'll hit render cache, and that's rendering. So this is basically just doing like what our optimized media was doing before, and it's sort of baking down all of the effects that have been applied, so it goes a little faster. But then you can see if we change something, like turn off our zoom blur, that changes our little blue rendered section back to red, which means it's unrendered or uncached. And it has to re-render all that. So if you're using your fusion cache, that's great for fusion effects because you know those are often super duper heavy and will really screw things up if you're on, you know, anything but a monster a lot of times. So we've got this. I'm gonna go ahead and just take off our blurs and other goofy stuff to make things look a little nicer. So we can actually go reset fusion composition, reset, let's reset all these guys. Very nice. And actually you saw, that was very interesting. Let's actually just quick redo something real quick because I think it's interesting. So we'll add our directional blur back in just to do something in fusion and whatever. If we go back, you also notice that took away our clip camera raw properties. So this is actually a very big deal because if you're doing a lot of grades in your camera raw properties and then you go into fusion to do you know something later on maybe you need a light switch removed then that totally screws it up. All right so Resolve had a little crash there but we're back and ready to move on to the next part. So now we know that we've got fusion cache is right now our current last step in the pipeline and then we move on to color. So here we go, fusion cache and then color, and let's change this back to project so maybe things won't get quite so confused. And now we've got our color. So we've got fusion happening before. So let's go ahead and do something in fusion just for goofs, shift five, and hope that things don't crash. And we'll do just to transform, drop this in here, and we'll just rotate it a little bit so it's really easy to see that we did something. And we'll go back to our color. There we go, now we've got our fusion effects happening and then after that we get our color effects so we can do our normal changes we can make this look just super great wow amazing job look at that beautiful top notch top notch color work Theo great job so we've got that and then maybe we're going to do something that requires a little bit of processing power so we'll go and turn noise reduction on we'll bring this all the way up 
And now that will be, you know, harder to play back. You can see it's stuttering a little bit there. So if we want to save that out, we can actually right click on the node and do node cache on. So then this will cache up to this location. So anything that happens after this, we'll go ahead and wait for this little red number to turn blue. All right, so now that's blue, which means this is cached. And if we do a node after this, then you see things change and they're nice and snappy now because this expensive noise reduction node is cached. And once again, this is happening after our fusion output. So what if you're saying, Theo, I want my noise reduction to happen before my fusion output. Well, there is a way to fix this. So we can go ahead and reset all grades and nodes here. And we'll go to our timeline and we will reset our fusion composition. I'll go ahead and make this a little shorter just to not have to wait as long caching. Now we'll go to our color page. We might make our color adjustment so we don't make it blue and we'll do some noise reduction. Great job. And I want this stuff to happen before the fusion. But if we look at our fusion composition right now, see it's happening after fusion. So go ahead and reset this fusion composition real quick just to make double sure. And then if we right click on this clip and go to new compound clip, I'll call this um, color before fusion. Now if we go to our fusion page, boom, we're getting our colored image. So if you've got you know, any reason for doing that, that's how you make that happen. And now so we can go transform and drag this in and rotate it. I'm going to do our color and we do more color adjustments here. Nice. Great job. Let's go ahead and change this so it's a little less intense. We've got something to look at. There we go. Beautiful. So now if we've got this, we can do node cache here still after our fusion and before fusion. Very interesting stuff. So then we only have a little bit of stuff that can happen after this. So if we go to our timeline again. We can add a transition. So if we go to something like a dip to color here, you can see if we go to white, this is happening obviously after our color. And then after our transitions, you'll see if we delete this and re-add it, you see this deletes part of our cache here. So we can actually update that with the sequence cache. You see this will cache automatically if we have playback, render cache, user on, and just automatically updates there. So even though this is the same blue line, this is actually a different cache than before. So I think that's pretty interesting to me. And then after our transitions and sequence cache, we finally get to the deliver page where if we scroll down to advanced settings, you see you've got these checkboxes for use optimized media and use render cache images. You see these are both checked off right now. So if we have both these checked off or unchecked, then it will actually re-render everything and not use your optimized or cached images, which will make it slower. But if you've been caching to uh, a less nice format or something for speed, or maybe you're going at half res or quarter res or something, undoing these will make sure that you render at full quality every time. So this is very useful. Or if you're just doing like edit deliveries or something, you turn on use optimized media, use render cache images, and it's going to blaze through that bad boy. So those are good things to know. So... <laughs> Let's go ahead and, and review real quick. It starts the source on the computer. Then it goes to the debayer if it's raw images. Then it goes to clip attributes. Then optimized media. Then your media viewers. Then your edit sizing, fusion, edit effects, fusion cache, color, node cache, transitions, sequence cache, render. And that's your order. And if you use a compound clip in there, then that will do all of your things from source to color and then let you go back and start again at edit sizing. So that is the DaVinci Resolve signal flow. What a monster to get through, but boy, if you stuck this long, you are hardcore and good for you. Give yourself a pat on the back, because this is not the sexy transitions or, or cool LUTs or whatever, but if you understand this, you're gonna have such a better time in DaVinci Resolve. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I definitely, I wouldn't say enjoyed making it, but I'm definitely glad that I did make it. Anyway. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. 
I mean, if you didn't like it, you should not be right here right now. I mean, you're a masochist, so like this video anyway, because then I'll keep making garbage stuff like this. It'll make you hate yourself. Um, if you want to support Meester Media, go to meestermedia.com slash products. Check out some stuff we've got there. It's good stuff. We also still have the Time and Pixel affiliate code, Theo15, which is really good stuff. I mean, I definitely recommend them over me. They've got those cool plugins. I've just got LUTs and stock footage and, and, and silly stuff. If you go to timeandpixels.com, type in Theo15, you know, you get some you get some 15% off. They're cool stuff. This video is not brought to you by them. I just I just really like their their things and really appreciate them for, for letting me shill for them. But anyway, once again, I'm at the with Meester Media. Have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.